Hey guys, hope you're well. I'm just filming back to back to back to back to back to back, which is quite nice. But essentially, we're gonna do part two of my LinkedIn news reporting discussions video, which is still under the entertainment industry discussions. This episode is also very music centric, but I promise you guys, the next two videos are like about fashion or just IP in general. So stay with me, stay with me. The first article I want to talk about is. Spotify low streaming. So essentially, over 150 million tracks have received 1,000 or fewer plays, with over 45 million tracks receiving zero plays on audio streaming platforms. And I would like to also know, I don't know, I don't remember if they did um, like through through regions, but I don't know, I don't know if that would be helpful to know like how much is like like mainly in North America. It doesn't have to be by specific countries, but just like continents like is it mainly like in the americas or is it mainly like in asia where it's where we have those low uh, low plays happening I, w I would like to know and maybe there's a correlation maybe there isn't apparently spotify would not pay royalties for tracks that have less than a thousand plays in the prior 12 months which is a bit i don't know is it would it be sad i mean it's not like artists are getting paid a lot of money from streams anyways like you would need to make so many streams to make decent. Artists cannot live off of their stream royalties. It's, it's not possible. <laughs> Let me tell you that. The, that's why artists are doing tours or they're like part artists, part influencers, having those brand collaborations, brand partnerships, brand stuff happening because they cannot, streams alone are not thing. That's why they are so touring. That's why they have merchandise. That's why they're, they have their little business happening on the sidelines because streams are nothing. Apparently, there's also Deezer that would make a similar move. But is that, did, this article did not really talk about why this is happening, those low stream plays. And I think we should have more information about this, like where is it mainly happening? Or is like, are these bots or are these like, is it, is it remakes that are not happening, happening? Or do streaming platforms have to like have a, a special threshold to be able to release songs on online or something like that on or, i mean on their platforms or stuff like that so it's quite interesting but i understand from the perspective of the streaming platforms because they don't want to they don't want to pay shit like they're already struggling okay i've talked about this in the last video which i filmed a couple of minutes ago but spotify especially spotify spotify negotiates with they really want a cut with the record books they, they're if it's like below 30% or I think 30% is like the number that is on my mind but it could be wrong because they don't really share the numbers with us with the public but essentially Spotify negotiated with the record label and said nope from all the streaming all the thing yeah you know all for all the membership yada yada blah, 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 we get a cut below that specific number we're not gonna survive but you're we're, we're gonna make this work and the record labels accept and all that stuff what was i going on with this but yeah it's actually spotify do you think they really want to pay money to something that's not making shit about fuck no okay i shouldn't be saying this you really think spotify is going to pay money for something that had one play over 150 million music uh, songs that have less than 1000 that's a lot of money is it because one stream on spotify is it's like less than, than less than a dollar less less than 50 cents this is from my my music law class and the source is dittomusic.com but essentially apparently spotify pays 0 0.00437 dollars per stream imagine that multiplied by 150 million songs hey they don't want to give that money and they don't they don't understandable <laughs> now if I can link it back to a music law perspective, I would say that it does show the the need to balance the interest of the artists, the right holders, and the consumers. And this new like this the, the fact that they don't want to pay for low for low streams just shows that there there is this need to address the inequalities in the royalty distribution process and I've talked about this in the first video, which I filmed a couple of minutes ago, um, that 
um, the MLC is really making sure that Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music are not only reporting the streams accurately, but making sure that they pay well, like they pay accurately for the royalties, okay? So it just, yeah. I would assume that most of these low plays are from independent artists. It really sucks because the, most of these independent artists don't have representation. UMG would be able to fight this with with Spotify, right? But I do, I, I, I am a big advocate for fair compensation for artists. And it does like, imagine you were at 999 and you're not gonna get paid? Come on, give me the money. Even though it's like 0 0.00437, give it. Well, let's, let's do the math, right? Where, well, let's say you have 1,000 1, plays, okay? And it was like 0 0.00437, right? Four dollars thirty-seven. Four dollars. Give me that. Give me that four dollars thirty-seven dollars. Like, give it to me. Ah, I want it. Even though it's nothing, it's still money. <laughs> you better pay me. Oh, Spotify. Come on, look at this. <laughs> now, would that mean that Spotify would negotiate with with the independent artists? Be like, give me a little bit. I don't know. I don't think so. Come on, dude. Come on. Because essentially, if the artists are fair, fairly compensated. They get to put put more music, which helps with the music listening experience for the consumer. Anyways, okay. Second news is also about Spotify. Spotify would suggest a super fan club. I think it has already been implemented, in the sense of um, like I think people who would be who would be in the top listening after the like Spotify rap. They would have a special video from from their favorite artist saying thank you for listening to my music so i think that's already like rolling out but essentially what the article was saying the announcement came alongside news of change coming to spotify app for iphone users in the eu following the curtailment of apps apple's 30 percent app tax by the digital markets act and spotify would suggested those the features like super fan clubs and improvement improved communications about promotional campaigns and events within the app from what i understand it could be an in-app purchase and it would enable spotify to provide better value and more transparent pricing options to users within the eu this is really funny because i think i can like also link it back to streaming platforms this whole streaming platforms like detachment of there's Netflix and now there's Disney and Amazon Prime and HBO. This is very just This is very much US centric. It cannot really translate well to the to even Canada. It doesn't translate automatically to Canada to the EU to Asia to anywhere else It's a very much like a US thing which makes the experience for other people that are not in the US sh like a mess uh, whole mess i've always wanted to watch uh, insecure but i had to watch well i'm not gonna watch insecure i haven't because there's not a hbo thing here in the uk or even in canada it's just it doesn't make i think these companies they really cater to the us because that's where they're based which is understandable but anything outside of the us they don't like it's like more so a secondary thing to them which should not be think about us too okay we're also we're also consumers okay spotify's ability to offer locked audiobooks and potentially other exclusive content suggests a new avenue for artists to engage with their super fans and generate additional revenue now i would like to know how much what's the cut for the artists if they do to if they were to publish exclusive content right the first thing that it reminds me of is like those um like the Kardashian, they I think at a certain there was a time where the Kardashian had their own apps and like it was just nothing. It was like this is why I have like Chloe had like the her. This is how I I do my kitchen like like that. Like it didn't bring anything valuable, so I don't know how that how that would work. Is it is it going to be like a Patreon but within the app? Because from what I hear, Patreon does like people who have Patreons or people who have like the the YouTube join thing. They get valuable content from their favorite creators, and they're happy with the content they get that they get when they pay extra. So I don't know how Spotify is going to do this. We'll see. And also, if artists are doing exclusive content, how much are the record labels going to be involved? Does that mean is it going to be music 
content where the record labels are him involved or is it just like I don't know this is my vlog going to like the studio and it, it's more so like uh, influencer type of content well I mean Spotify so it has to be related to music somehow or maybe not because there's there's what's it like no it's what podcasts podcasts are not necessarily about audio so we shall see okay i'm gonna link down like two more articles about the super fan thing with spotify and how does it link back with apple music how does it contrast with apple music and their app tax but my last news i will talk about is this is quite old but the environmental impact of coplay and their the music tour that they did warner music live nation and coplay launched their they launched this a study to show the environmental impact of live music events and in that initiative did provide access to the carbon footprint of concerts across venues in the uk and the, in the us depending on the the, the the size of the venues and all that stuff and essentially these reports aim to identify the areas for improvements and sustainable solutions to reduce emissions which when Coldplay did their the tour there was a lot of videos explaining how it worked and how they used the like energy from from like the audience to like create light and all that so that was really really cool and Coldplay's commitment to manufacturing physical records from recycled plastic bottles implementing initiatives like offering fans free or discounts and rides to shows demonstrates their long standing dedication to sustainability oh, sustainability essentially this this initiative by Coolplay does show the importance of addressing climate change and the impact of the music industry with climate change i'm so sorry but going to uh last year was a weird year where people were talking about People standing, sitting hours, days in front of a venue to see their favorite artist. I want to know what what was that impact, or I don't know how it works in the in the U.S. But concerts here in the U.K. and also in Can like back home in Canada, public transportation is quite important. Like you can have a car, but the the cities make sure that public tra transportation is the better option. But I don't. It, but it doesn't limit just to that, right? It's also like what happens at the venue. There's. I think there's a lot of um, what's it called, waste that happens with probably like the food or, just, I don't know. I think that could be a great initiative. And I like this initiative because it does, it does lead the way for other artists to maybe, m be more conscious of. Their environmental impact now i want to say thing this this does that mean that some artists might do less shows might do fewer cities because of the impact i don't know that could be also an interesting question to ask less shows mean probably more expensive tickets but also in the recent news with taylor swift making an exclusive deal with singapore where singapore is essentially the only country in the Southeast Asia, if I'm not mistaken, to host Taylor Swift and her concerts. Now, it would probably mean that the other consumers in other Asian countries would have to fly in to Singapore, which will drive businesses, you know, in hotels, transportation, food, restaurants for Singapore, which is a good thing for them. But when it comes to the environmental impact, that could be a big issue. And I don't know if the data would be accessible to see if it would be better actually for Taylor Swift to make multiple stops rather than hundreds of thousands of fans coming and in, flying into Singapore. Do you need to do two shows for in one city? Do you need to do... Okay, like, that actually sucks because growing up in Montreal, Every time an artist would do a tour, they would always go to Toronto or Toronto and Vancouver. They would never come to Montreal, even though Montreal is six hours away by car from Toronto. Which, if you're going to Toronto from Montreal, you need to plan out like you need to block out three days. You can't go for one day unless you're unless you're rich and you have a private jet, which I don't. And that is also bad for the environment if you're always going on a private jet for 
short trips but i i do i do like the concept of touring and like and uh, this is like the best way for artists to make money first of all but also interact directly with their fans with their audience but the environment guys what are we gonna do about this i know that you know there's beyonce and taylor Swift that have done their a film based on their tours for people who weren't able to attend the shows live or also to provide more behind the scenes but then again that it doesn't it doesn't replace the direct interaction that you get with the with the artist and the artist doesn't get a direct interaction with you the audience and also it get it, it like the artist gets to control more of like the film how to manipulate the film and stuff like that so it, it it does come as less like there's less of a connection with this i don't know but it is a it, it is a good first step we're, we're heading in the right direction if we're talking about environmental impact so this was my part two of this linkedin news reporting stuff <laughs> but i hope you liked this video and i'll see you guys next time bye